What does it take for you to hate a person so much you want to murder them? It's easy to imagine such a scenario if said person were to have first done something horrible to you. When they drew first blood, it doesn't take much from your end to justify your desire for revenge. After all, giving them a punishment that fits the crime is simply an act of justice. In fiction, revenge is commonly used as a driving motivator for the characters. It gives them a clear sense of goal or purpose, depending on how it's framed. A story often paints revenge as either morally good or bad. While normally used in integration with hate and obsession, revenge can also be shown to be the enforcement of justice. For example, in the movie Kill Bill, the main character is primarily driven by revenge. However, her desire for it isn't portrayed as a force of evil. Revenge in itself doesn't necessarily carry any kind of moral worth. It is a neutral tool that can be molded and expanded. The Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul universe with its wide cast of morally gray characters has effectively communicated this theme through one of its major characters, Gustavo Fring. A big part of this character is his desire for revenge on Don Eladio's drug cartel, and by extension the Salamanca family for killing his important partner, Max. This video aims to articulate and explicate Gus's vengeance against the Salamancas and demonstrate how it reveals the intricacies of his character. Gus's desire for revenge is an anomaly. Through both series, Gus is constantly shown as a hyper-pragmatic, emotionless individual who is only concerned with the well-being of his business. He looks out for his employees and compensates them fairly. He has also so meticulously constructed a public persona that he has ties to the DEA, not only putting him beyond suspicion, but also giving him a way to obtain crucial information in order to run his drug empire smoothly. He sees people as pawns and manipulates them accordingly to fit his goals. Everything Gus does somehow feels detached, logical, and calculated. This almost robotic degree of practical consideration is simply missing in his reasoning behind his revenge. Gus's reason for revenge is to inflict the same kind of pain he felt when he saw Max killed ruthlessly right in front of him. Coincidentally, this becomes the very thing that humanizes Gus. It provides him with more intrigue as it stands in contrast to the rest of what his character is all about. It is interesting to point out that for a rational person, Gus has something immensely emotional that acts as his fundamental driving force. The same can't be said about Gus's methods of going about his revenge. As one of the Salamanca's crucial business partners, Gus understands that subtlety is of the essence. Having already been suspected by several pairs of eyes in the cartel, Gus knows that any obvious moves like thinly veiled assassination attempts are able to be immediately traced back to him. Gus was biding his time. He planned to take them down one by one, utilizing any opportunity that presented itself. The following is an explanation of how Gus influenced and caused the death of notable members of the Salamanca family and how each expresses a crucial trait of Gus's character. As possibly the biggest threat out of all the Salamancas, Gus set his sights on Lalo as his first target. Lalo was already suspicious of him and he was getting a little too close to the truth. Gus knew he had to make an elaborate plan to ensure that Lalo was no longer a problem. He orchestrated for Lalo to get arrested and sent back to Mexico. However, this was not his end goal. Gus understood that Lalo needed to be eliminated and that his being in jail was not enough. Therefore, Gus planned on killing him once he had been sent back to Mexico to raise fewer suspicions. Although Lalo did go to Mexico, his specific location made it harder for Gus to execute his plans as he was staying in the well-guarded Salamanca estate. However, with the help of Nacho, Gus sent in his mercenary anyways, resulting in Lalo's apparent death. Gus did not know that Lalo was, in fact, still alive. However, that did not last long as Gus's meeting with Hector told him all he needed to know. Gus knew that Hector would not be able to hide how he truly felt if Lalo was truly dead. Hector's smug expression gave away the fact that Lalo was still alive. From here on, Gus knew it was only a matter of time before Lalo eventually found his secret lab. Gus then prepared a gun there, for he knew that Lalo would probably be able to overpower him physically, although Hector's lack of emotional concealment was ultimately the cause of Gus being able to take Lalo down, it wouldn't have been possible without Gus's extremely careful and meticulous planning. He thought well ahead and provided the means he would need under potential scenarios that he predicted might arrive. His methods of taking Lalo down further explicated this trait of Gus's character. Aside from Lalo, the way Gus handled the Salamanca twins also revealed the crucial aspects of Gus's character. 
When they were coming to avenge Tuco, Gus knew he had to divert them somehow, as he still needed to do business with Walter. This was where Gus's connections to the DEA paid off. Gus knew that it was, in fact, Hank that killed Tuco. Knowing this, he easily redirected them towards Hank. The twins were initially hesitant given the fact that Hank was a DEA agent. However, knowing how daring the twins can be, Gus secretly gave them the okay behind the backs of both Don Eladio and the cartel. Soon after, Gus immediately gave Hank an anonymous phone call, warning him that a couple of assailants were coming in an attempt at his life. This is an exceptionally great move as Gus managed to do three things at once. Not only did he prevent the twins from assassinating his current business partner, but he also caused potential death to the Salamanca twins at the hands of a DEA agent, as well as throwing the DEA off his scent and into investigating the cartel, all the while remaining safely outside of suspicion. This move expresses Gus's cunning and on-the-fly thinking. It shows that while Gus never stopped being careful, it did not prevent him from seizing an unlikely opportunity whenever it passed him by. The last and most important Salamanca member to take down was Hector. Unlike the other members, Gus did not necessarily have a hard time putting him out of commission. In fact, he didn't even have to do much with it. It was something done without his knowledge by Nacho Varga as a desperate attempt to kill him in order to prevent the Salamancas from using his dad's honest business as a cover-up for their drug operation. As Hector writhed and spasmed through his artificially induced heart attack, Gus quickly realized that he did not want Hector to die just yet. Gus wanted Hector to suffer a little more. He wanted Hector to see what was being done to his family. Gus wanted to inflict as much pain as Hector inflicted upon him, more even if possible. To Gus, Hector was different, as he was the one that physically pulled the trigger and ended the life of his loved one. This sentiment is a mirror of Gus's fundamental emotional entanglement. Through his childhood story, it was discovered that he had always been vengeful. When a small animal destroyed his prolific tree, he kept it in a cage, keeping it alive for some time until its life eventually fizzled out. The same emotionality has become the reason for his failure to finish off Hector. In the interest of prolonging Hector's suffering, Gus unknowingly gave enough time for Walter to use Hector against him. Ultimately, Gus did not manage to take Hector down and was instead taken down as Hector blew himself up. Hector's death revealed Gus's rarely seen humanity. Although it showcased an ugly, hateful side of humanity, it communicated his pain and wrath at having something of precious value taken away from him. The way Gus took down all, or at least most, of the prominent Salamaca members elaborated the intricacies of his character. His extreme cunning and methodical, almost paranoid approach is shown in his methods of taking down Lalo and the Salamaca twins, while his relationship to Hector lets the viewers know of Gus's fundamental motivation. Gus's dynamics with the Salamancas exemplified an effective way revenge can be used as a complex, multidimensional driving force in a character. It tells us that beneath the cold, detached exterior lies an emotional, resentful man who will stop at nothing to avenge the life of the only people that he ever truly cared for.